Hello and welcome to EC QuickBooks Training. Please subscribe to my channel if you want to keep up with your how-tos, tips and tricks, or troubleshooting for QuickBooks. Today we're going to learn how to give our accountant a copy of our QuickBooks file. I will show you how to do this in QuickBooks Online and on the QuickBooks desktop. First of all, let's cover QuickBooks Online because QuickBooks Online is really easy to do. All we have to do is go to the gear icon, go to manage users, and then go to add my invite my accountant. You can see all we need is their name and their email address and QuickBooks will send them an invite to access your QuickBooks file and they can start working right away. That's how simple it is for QuickBooks Online. Now let's do Quick, QuickBooks Desktop. In the desktop, we have to go to File. Then we need to create a copy. And we're going to send an accountant's copy. We do that. We hit Next. And we select accountant's copy. The reason we do an accountant's copy and not a portable or backup file is because our accountant is going to do the changes in QuickBooks and they want to send us those changes back. In order for QuickBooks to just receive the changes that the accountant made, we need to give them an accountant's copy. If we give them a backup and we restore a backup, we're actually replacing our QuickBooks file with that backup. So if we've worked on our copy of QuickBooks, we would replace current information. So we don't want to do that. We want to give them an accountant's copy. We will hit Next and we're going to hit the dividing date. Now the dividing date is the date that the accountant is going to work on. So if we select the dividing date, let's say as of December 30th, um, the accountant cannot work on anything after December 30th. And um, you cannot, as the user of QuickBooks, work and enter transactions before December 30th. That is the dividing date. Um, usually I like to give the accountant's copy around January and I'll tell you why. It's not the end of December yet and watch what happens if I select the end of the month. Let's see. Let's do custom January 30th. It will tell us that we cannot select a future date. So we cannot do this. So I usually tend to send the accountant's copy in January 15, January 20, or by the end of January. That way we can select January 31st. I usually select January 1st. That way the accountant can do transactions as of January 31st if they prefer. Since it's not the year end, I'm going to select December 21st. Then I'm going to hit Next. QuickBooks will need to close all the windows. We say OK. And then we select where we want to save the accountant's copy. We hit OK. And it's creating a copy for us. While we're waiting, I wanted to show you a meme that I did. It says, let's get down to business. Let's learn QuickBooks. OK, here we go. Um, it has successfully created a copy for us. We hit OK. And that is it. So now we can email our accountant a QuickBooks accountant copy. And as you can see at the top, I'm going to move this here. It says accountants changes pending. So once you send that copy to your accountant, you will see accountants change changes pending. When the accountant is done, they will send you, email you, the copy of the changes, and then we're going to import those changes by going to, if I can find it, accountant's copy, convert accountant's copy to company file. And that's probably going to be another tutorial. So if you want to keep watching, please subscribe to my channel, and I will see you in the next one.